Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Hermetica. Hermetica is brought to you by IFF Studios. It plays two players, ages seven and up, and each game takes about 25 minutes to play. Great, well let's go see if we can master the elements. Setup is quick and easy. You're gonna roll out the play mat. This play mat is a grid of hexes. And there are some different colored hexes here to keep in mind. The black ones are walls, totally impassable. And either end of the play mat are lighter gray hexes. Mm -hmm. And these indicate your horizon. And really, it's the goal of the game. It is. Your main player piece, known as the adept, will need to get to your opponent's horizon. Now, there, these adepts are your main piece. And there's the sun and the moon. To help players move their adepts down to the opposing horizon, each player has nine elemental units. Mm -hmm. Three fire, three water, and three earth. And each of these elemental units, as well as the adept, have their own unique move types. Yeah, and what's interesting here is that it is super, it's pretty easy really to learn how they move, but it then is. how do you put them all together? That's really the to challenge. To work together, Yeah, right? that's the challenge of the game, and yep. I think that's the thing that makes it most interesting. Also during setup, you're going to place barriers on the play field. Now, what's interesting here is that these barriers can be in all kinds of different configurations, can, yeah. and which really changes up each game. It does. Hermetica comes with 12 of these gray hexagon pieces, which act, they're walls, and mm -hmm. they act as barriers. Now, when you start, if you're new to the game, there are three pre-configured designs right. that allow you to set those down, and, and the, the designers have determined those are good starting places. Mm -hmm. However, if you're a more advanced player, you can actually draft a location of these barriers. It's pretty slick, actually. It because is. Because you can have a totally different play area than you've ever played before. Exactly. Each game will be different. Yep. After the walls have been placed, each player places his adept piece in the prime location indicated by this symbol here. Then players take turns placing three of their elemental units in their local horizon. During your turn, you're going to get three action points to spend. Now, these points can be spent in various ways. Usually, you're going to spend them to move your elements or your adept. Now, if you move an element, you can only do it once per turn. Mm -hmm. And each of these elements can be flipped over so you can kind of keep track of which ones have moved and which ones haven't on yeah. your turn. That's not, it's not required. It's not required. But, but you can, you can but do it's that. a handy little, it is, it just is. to keep track of things. So that's nice. And also, if you need to bring out new elements, you bring them out to your horizon, but that costs you two action points to do so. Right. Moving costs one mm -hmm. and spawning costs two. Now, also, your adept might be taken out temporarily, mm -hmm. that's on the sidelines, and to bring him back or her back, <laughs> it's going to be uh, to the prime spot or horizon. You can place it in either one, but again, right. costing you two action points to do so. Exactly. And the Adept is the only one that can be respawned. For all mm -hmm. of your other elemental units, once they are captured, they're out for the rest of the game. Right. All right, first, let's take a look at the Adept. During each turn, a player has the option of spending one action point to move the Adept up to two spaces in any direction. Mm -hmm. Now, those hexes that he moves into must be empty. Right. Before the moves, after them, or in between them, the player has also the option of deploying the adept's shield, which is a hexagonal piece that matches the color of the, of the adept. Now, this can only be done once per turn, and this barrier, this shield, must be put on a location without a barrier already. Right. If it happens to be, to be placed on a hex that contains an elemental unit, that, that unit is immediately captured. <laughs> now, it's not allowed to put the shield on top of a, uh, an adept, right. the opponent's adept, and capture that due to a gentleman's agreement. Okay, okay. so adepts cannot capture adepts. Which is pretty slick. It I is. Like, I like that. It's a good rule. If a player chooses not to deploy a shield in a turn, it remains where it was in the previous turn. All right, we're going to take a look at my favorite element, which is fire. It has so many different neat things it can do. So first off, you can spend an action point to move four spaces in any direction. Mm -hmm. Right, And they, they don't have to be linear. That's they can right. It just can be all over all the over place, place. Yeah. which is really slick. Now, the other thing it can do is it can shoot fire four spaces away. Right, and that does have to be linear. So it, it does. Has to be a straight it's line. straight line. And you can take out other elements this way, which is fantastic. <laughs> also... The, the cool thing is it has some special moves as well. So it's the only element that can land on top of a barrier. Now, if you shoot at another barrier that has a, the opponent's fire on top of it, so basically you're shooting into the barrier, you can capture the opponent's fire that's sitting on top. 
And again, it's really a neat aspect of this element. You know, I feel like it's the one that has the most going on. It does. It's got quite a bit going yeah. on. And there's a special thing it does with the, sh the, this the is, friendly shield. Right, which is really cool. So if you land on your friendly shield, you can move then with the shield. Yeah, you're like Basically you're driving, you're in, the driving in the car, right? <laughs> so, and at any point, you can get out of the car. Right. Yep. And continue your, your four movement yep. points uh, outside of that. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at Earth. Earth is basically the Hulk of the board. And it's green. And it's green. <laughs> All right, so Earth can push things around. Really, that's kind of its goal, is yeah, to right. push other elements around. Now, it can push one element at a time. Mm -hmm. You can't line up like four elements and push them all. Right. Nothing like that. But the other thing it can do is it can push the friendly shield. It can, right. And why would you push things? So if you can push an element into a barrier off a horizon or into a wall on the side of the board, then that unit is crushed and captured. And exactly. Next up, we have water. And what does water do? It flows. It flows all over the place. <laughs> yes, it does. And in the same way, fire was Mark's favorite piece, water is mine. Nice. So when you move a water element, it is like a localized tidal wave. Yeah. It moves until it collides with something. Tsunami. It moves in a straight line, <laughs> exactly. So it, it until it collides with another elemental mm -hmm. unit, an adept, a barrier, right. a shield, uh, the walls on the side, or the edge of the horizon. It just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So it goes until it collides with something. Yep. And once it does collide with something, if that is a barrier or one of the units, it can reposition that unit someplace around it. So if it's one of the units, if it's uh, uh, either the adept or one of the elements, it can position that on any empty hex adjacent to the water piece. If it's a barrier, it can uh, reposition that barrier mm -hmm. any place uh, any adjacent hex that doesn't already contain a barrier, including a hex that, that contains one of these units, uh, either an element or the, an adept. Right. So once it places a barrier on top of one of these units, it is captured. Now, we've mentioned before that each of these elements have a special move associated mm -hmm. with the friendly shield. Yep. When water impacts a friendly shield, it has the option of, instead of moving it that, uh, that piece around itself, it can move itself around, around the shield. Yeah. So it can position itself on any hex, empty hex, yeah. around that shield. I think that's my favorite part above the water, is moving around the shield, it's flowing around it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and, and the key here is that um, of all the pieces, it probably is the most active one because mm -hmm. you can be moving from one side of the board to the other. Yeah. So, and it keeps your eyes open because even though all of the uh, opponent's pieces may be on the other side of the board, mm -hmm. you have to remember that those can move very quickly to your side of the board. Indeed. All right, just a few other things of note. So fire, as we talked about, it can be on top of a barrier or top of a shield. Now, if you happen to move that barrier out of the way or any move it in any place, that fire is then captured. Right, and it falls to its it death. It falls yeah. to its death, especially <laughs> if water moves it. Right? Yes. <laughs> right. So that's something to note. And also, like we said, you have three actions, but you don't have to use all that's of these true. actions, that's right? That's true. You might be strategic to just say, oh, I'm just going to do this one thing. And everybody goes, why is he doing just that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? You might so, be near checkmate or something. Right, like that. exactly. Yeah. Also, it's important to remember that once you spawn a unit, either an element or one of the adepts, they cannot move that turn. They're, they're summoning sick. I think we can say that. That's yeah, right. So. They are summoning sick. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, as we said before, the game ends when your adept reaches your opponent's horizon. And it can be in any of the hexes there. Yep. One of the things you really need to check out is their website because you can go play this game right now. They've done a fantastic job putting this into a web experience. Yeah. And not only that, but there's a bunch of puzzles too that teach you how to maneuver the different elements. Right, so if, if we haven't explained the rules in a way that you fully understand yet, go to the website, check out the tutorial, play some of the puzzles yep. to get a feel of the challenges, and you can even play against other live players yeah. out there on the internet. But as good as that is, and I played through all the puzzles and enjoyed that yeah, immensely. they're really cool. It's not a substitute for playing as no. another live player. So yep. we still recommend, even if you like the website, we highly recommend the game. Absolutely. All right, folks, just a reminder again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. Mm -hmm. Now, this prototype is looks super polished and done. It is, it is. It's beautiful. And the version we have has the stitching around the edge of this playmat, and I believe that's one of their stretch goals. Yeah, I'm hoping they make it. I hope they make it as well. So 
this game, you know, I really like abstracts, and I love the use of elements in abstracts. Yeah. I love how they, they interact and do different things. They've really done a nice job here. They have. Um, about 35 or 40 years ago, back when the earth was still cooling, I played a game called Pente, and it involved oh. little glass beads, and uh, which I loved then, but that was the past, and for me, this is the future. Absolutely. This is an excellent game. I look forward to playing it with uh, friends and family. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm planning on getting a copy of this for my brother to play with nice. my nephew. Uh, I think it's a very, very good game. Mm -hmm. Lots lots to think about, lots really? of variation. I uh, love the variation. Yeah. It's so, and and you could have like a multiple fire out, and maybe that's your strategy, is just yeah. to go full off force with fire. But, you know, I've, it's been interesting in the games that we found some different combinations of how the different elements behave and work together. They do. And you mentioned before the key is how you get them to work together. For mm -hmm. those people who remember the X-Men or are <laughs> fans of them, uh, there was something that uh, two of the characters frequently mm -hmm. did. Colossus, which was a great big character, would right. pick up Wolverine <laughs> and, it, and throw him, okay? So he'd be close to the target. <laughs> and, right. and they called it the fastball special. And this is a, a key thing about this game. Oh, is you, yeah. you often find yourself trying to do that sort of thing. You can't, for example, with fire, it's like, I can't shoot that guy and I can't move earth far enough to squish him. So what I do is I use earth to move fire into position exactly. to where I can shoot him. And so you see a lot of those combos come mm -hmm. together, and when you, when it does come together, it's, it's good. awesome. It's, yeah, there's really good feeling about it. It really is. All right, so if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. Absolutely. So I think that's it from us, and until next time, we'll, we'll see you at, at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.